I'm Damon Zell, and this is Echoes from the Front, the Content Creator Summit, a ongoing series where we get all the content creators together and we discuss different aspects of the game. In today's talks, we have the Big Skillet, we have Achieved, we have Gigaforte, we have an Eve Echoes official mod, Nino, with us, we have PM Blue, and we also have Scipio Killmark Collectors. So let's go around and hear from everybody and find out exactly how you got into content creation for Eve Echoes. Hey, thanks, Damon Zell. I, I appreciate you having me here. Um, I, I'm Big Skillet. Uh, I've been a content creator for, uh, I think, about six to eight months. And how I got into creating content for Eve Echoes was essentially another content creator in a different game uh, let me know that even uh, there was going to be a mobile version of Eve Online. So uh, having played Eve Online for seven years uh, at release, uh, I was super excited, you know, for the opportunity. I, I got into the last open beta um, and the game is great. It's a great, simple, you know, simplified version of Eve Online. Um, you know, it definitely has a you know, long way to go, but I'm very excited, for, you know, for what we have so far and, and where it could go. That's great, great. Ashif, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved. All right, hello, this is Ashif. I am, I would say that I am an EVE Online veteran for 16 years and I quit EVE Online as soon as I heard about a game before EVE Echoes actually, but then they changed that game into EVE Echoes and I was like, yeah, I'm not coming back to EVE Online, I want to start fresh. Uh, I didn't start doing any content creator stuff until a half a year in. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I would say that I have a lot of experience in the New Eden world and I do some live streams. I, I do all these uh, different types of videos that you might have seen and uh, I just love doing it and I'm very happy to be here. That's great, great. Gigaforte, you are one of the first content creators back from Alpha and Beta. Why don't you go ahead and tell us about yourself? Hi, I'm Jika. Um, I'm actually just like Sheev. I'm a veteran EVE Online player. I've been playing since 2004. Had to quit in 2016 due to, you know, kids happen, uh, stuff like that. Um, I went into card games. That's how I originally started as a content creator on YouTube. Um, and immediately as I heard about the Vacos, I was like, this has to be good, right? <laughs> um, and immediately I, I didn't manage to catch the alpha. I was able to catch the beta and that's where the channel went off with Evecos only content. And here we are today. <laughs> and thanks for having me. Oh no, problem. oh, no problem. And uh, I know you, like myself, are, is one of the senior content creators uh, for oh, you yeah. that goes. That is correct. Nina? Nina? Welcome, Nina. I know you're one of the official mods on the Eve Echoes Discord, but are you also a content creator? Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, hello, my name is uh, Nina. Technically, no, I'm not a content creator unless you consider creating drama on the Discord as content, you know? But um, I first got into Eve Echoes over two years ago now because I was just browsing the internet, saw that Eve Echoes mobile alpha was being tested. So I was like, oh, no, I'll sign up. I won't get in anyway because I never win RNG stuff. Got into the alpha day one, started playing. It was like, hey, this is hella cool. Um, then moderator applications opened. I was like, you know, why not give it a shot? They gave me mod status, and then that's just been the story ever since. Uh, I generally uh, focus on submitting suggestions, bug reports, and other stuff to the devs. I actually wonder if you have more access to the devs than we currently do. Uh, now, I do remember that you used to help and run with Sovereign back when he was a content creator. Uh, yes, we... Uh joined the same court together and kind of uh, met a really good friend in Sovereign from there. As for access to the mods, maybe, maybe not. I'm not really sure on everyone else's access, obviously. I feel partly because I have been a moderator since Alpha, then naturally I can get more access, somewhat. 
but it's very hit and miss. Great, great. Now, Pam Blue, I know that you're a content creator and a programmer on different sorts of applications for the game, correct? That is correct. Um, I started this journey uh, when uh, I made my bot originally for uh, actually auto moderation. Uh, then a gaming community I was part of ended up playing the game and I fell in love with it. And whenever I get really into something, I get like, that's where I just do everything. And that includes programming. Uh, so I, I just started getting Epicus data from the Reddit. Shout out to everyone who's done that on the Reddit. And uh, I started programming. And now I've recently implemented kill mail parsing. It's been a wild ride. I, I wish that we had more support for developers, but that's another story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes us two software engineers in here. <laughs> and we also have Scipio, uh, Killmark Clickers, here with us today. Why don't you go ahead and tell us about yourself? Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, so I'm Scipio in game, Killmark Collectors YouTube. Um, got into content creating, content creating, I guess. Um, right about a year ago, um, had played for a couple of months, uh, but that was really my first experience in EVE, um, whether, you know, it's EVE Online or, or EVE, uh, EVE Echoes, uh, I, I can't claim to be the, the seasoned grizzled vet that some of you guys are. So really for me, it was, uh, I, I've always wanted to play. I just never had a computer that was good enough or, you know, really time to, to do this. So when it came out on mobile, I was really pumped to be able to jump in and really get to, to try some of the mechanics and the just awesome gameplay around this. So um, was really excited to jump in, learned a heck of a lot from corp mates and YouTube videos. Um, you know, Gek, I think I think I watched probably 10 to 20 hours of your stuff uh, the, the first couple of months as I was learning. So it's uh, really an honor to be here with you guys and uh, just get to continue sharing and, and growing as we uh, we all kind of figure this out together. All right. So now the game's been out for over a year and a half now, and we are nearing a dawn of a new year. We're at that new year's time, and the devs promise us that we have content on the horizon. But as we look past this year that uh, we just got through, what stands out to you guys? What is your most memorable moment of 2021? Well, I'll, I'll just start there. Um, I think really one of the most memorable things for me has just been how much, and I don't know if this is really memorable or just kind of something I'm, I'm impressed with, but really just how much outside of the game is involved in playing the game, you know, um, whether it's the, the huge battles and alarm clocking CTAs because, you know, we've got a Citadel and Hull and we pull together a couple hundred people to fight, fight another couple hundred people who are doing the same thing. Um, I think those have been just really incredible moments and in the relationships and the discussions that we have on Discord and all that other stuff. I think for me, that's probably been the quote unquote most memorable thing, if you will. Um, just some of those relationships and some of the people that, you know, I've connected with throughout the, the year. Exactly. I mean, there's so much more to the game than just the game. You have your, you know, political aspects. You have your Discord warriors. You have your Reddit uh, propagandaists. There is so much more, including the spy game. The spy game is a complete different meta than the actual game itself. For yeah, sure. the evil darkness. <laughs> yeah. Where are you? yeah, I have to say it. Like coming from Eve Online, I was I was hoping to have the same community as we have on e on EVE Online and uh, the, the way it works today on EVE Echoes is very similar to EVE Online and I, I'm very happy about that um, but they they do have the fight against the iOS or, or the mobile genre people that don't really get this so um, we see how it goes this can be very big just in terms of of the people around the game. Skillet, Skillet anything, anything uh, uh, you could think, you could think of that stands out, stands out in the last year? I just think it's amazing how well they simplified the UI for mobile 
when you compare it to EVE Online. I mean, EVE Online, the, the UI is so important and there's stuff everywhere. And the way they minimized, but, but at the same time maximized the space you have is just so impressive. And, uh, and, and to echo what Scipio was saying, you know, the friendships made, you know, I came in with a handful of friends from, from another game and then just broaden that horizon, you know, tenfold. It's just been amazing. The community has been really great. Um, I think they've been responsive to all of us um, in, in a positive way. And it's, it's great to see it grow. Um, a little frustrated with the direction of the events, but if you put those events aside, you know, the game is about 95% great, right? Um, you know, they need to fine tune some of those pain points that you know, we, we've all talked about ad nauseum over the last several months. But all in all, it's a great game and uh, happy to have found it. Now, as content creators, I know we've all fought with the UI when making our videos. Now, I have on good authority from any cloud who says that in the future, uh, on the horizon, there will be a way, a button press, to hide the complete UI, to just give us a cinematic view of our ship and the surrounding areas around it. Hey -o. That's gonna be That's awesome. That's gonna be cool, yeah. That's gonna be real cool. Yeah, because then, yeah, then I'm seeing some, do... some real fun for uh, creative, uh, I'll say non, like combat or non tutorials and things like that. Like I'm thinking like the old red versus blue and stuff like that. I can see a lot of that with uh, with something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of storytelling, a lot cinematic. of cinematic. Yeah. Uh, uh, Giga, any anything that stands out for you in the last year? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm kind of um, more like invested into story. I'm a story driven player, and I was incredibly nose deep in lore in, in Evil Nine, and I actually enjoy that part, even though they had some slip ups here and there. But it was pretty good. It was consistent. And for a law enthusiast like me, it was something great and amazing. And I was extremely disappointed that Eve Echoes was devoid of law. I mean, they used to base law on Eve Online, but not mentioned anywhere at all. Um, it was based on, but devoid of. It's, it's a weird paradox. So what I did last year, I got in contact with Exile. I got in contact with the law team. Uh, the head of the law team was on maternal leave. Uh, she returned, uh, I, think, I believe, recently. And I started uh, picking up writing. And I started writing the first official chronicle, uh, which I'm in discussion of, I don't know, making it official, making it canon. And I have several other stories that I'm planning to, uh, to write up. And hopefully this is going to be something great and uh, something to work on on the next year. Now, are these stories only going to revolve around the NPC factions, or they also contain, say, the community, some of the bigger entities uh, out there in Nullsec, some of which who are now defunct? Um, as I'm really objective about it, it they're going to be like short stories based on fictional characters, uh, but they're going to be based in the uh, New Eden Eve Echoes universe. Uh, mainly, the the stories are actually scientific stories, so they're based off on real science and, and real papers that I try to research and explain things that are happening in the game. Uh, for example, the um, um, the people in Alter New Eden, as I call it, um, getting or at least becoming aware that they are a parallel universe, because that's what Eve Echoes is, is an echo from the main thing. Um, so. That's pretty much how it's going to be. Um, I won't try to involve um, any particular characters or real-life characters. I'm trying to keep it objective, uh, being just law as it is, and nothing more. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, do you know of anything maybe on the horizon that's going to center around that new faction that they made just for Eve Echoes or the Jean Yoon? I know they were talking way back when that they were bringing this faction in. It's going to have its own lore. It's going to be separate from what was in CCP. Anything like that coming in the near future? Well, you know? uh, they did mention uh, one or two months ago when I talked to them about uh, stuff and lore. Uh, they did mention they are trying to like kick off some stories for the Yang Jung, and we did see two of these stories being included in the Golden Age event. 
And those were kind of neat, although they had some MacGuffin plot holes devices there, which I didn't really much like. For example, yeah. the uh, uh, collective consciousness, which was pretty much stolen from the sleepers, you know, the construct in which they all went in the VR mode. Um, I didn't like that one exactly in particular, but um, I think they might be heading towards the, uh, I don't know, the right tracks. Um, the law team was in complete disarray as the law team uh, head was on maternal leave. So I think they actually didn't know what to do. And probably most of the, the team working on law were kind of scattered on the other teams working on various other stuff. That's it would explain why the law was completely forgotten. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to pick your brain a little bit on that and uh, compare some notes. I've done some writing myself and would love to uh, love to, to jump in there with you because that sounds like a ton of fun to, to craft some of those stories. Sure thing. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah, and everyone listening uh, right now, go into Kika and look at look that up because it, it, it's a good it, it's good listen. Do you say that? Listen? It's a good read? <laughs> good read, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good read. Giga is the resident lore king. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nina, uh, Nina, any uh, highlights any highlights over the last year? year? Anything yeah, stands, uh, that stands out for you? Well, that's a bit of a uh, big question, isn't it? Um, it's a little vague on purpose. I know. I I hate to parrot other people's uh, views on this, but being a moderator, of course, I'm in the Discord a hell of a lot, and in general, just the community. I mean to say that we've had some tough times this last year is a bit of an understatement I'm sure you can agree but oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. yeah even the devs have gone on record showing that since the balance that they did that there was a huge dip in active players running inside the game and they said that during the round table yeah that kind of surprised me that they said that but um, just in general like the community when the EVE community in both Echoes and online is at its best, it's a, such a good community to belong to because like, they'll help you out with anything. And I'm really happy to see that sense of community from EVE Online translate into EVE, e EVE Echoes. Awesome. awesome. And, and of course, uh... you know, the... Uh, fights happening daily people blowing each other up and being good sports about it you know we're just playing a game to have fun and it's really nice to see that happening throughout the year blue blue uh, anything, uh, anything stand up for you yeah I, I like i think it's just not even the big fights but the small ones when you're going out and roaming with friends and i, I think that's because this game is just so community driven uh i i don't think anyone any of us would be here like, if it were not for the community and if it were just like a solo player game, uh, that, that's what really makes this game as great as it is. With that, With that you can't really have large battles. That's true. <laughs> NPC battles. Burned. <laughs> no, but really, that, that's the main thing. The community, the people, that, that makes the whole game. And as long as they make sure that we have stuff to do, and that we can go our ways in this game to play it pretty much however we want to do it. If you want to be an industrialist, you have to be able to do that. Find your own way, make your own business. That is going to grow the community and that's going to make this game live for like forever. Yeah, well, yeah one that of the, works into... That, that, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, one, one of the key moments in EVE Online history was... You know, the game was sort of at a crossroads at a certain point. And when they created that, the player based council that would act as an intermediary between, you know, the CCP and, and, and the players, I think really is when the game changed and solidified itself into the 18 year game that it is today. Because, you know, before they would release something, they would, you know, discuss it with this council just to make sure that. It's what the players wanted that, I mean, obviously they didn't buy into everything and it wasn't solely a yes, no, but there was some dialogue there. And, you know, it's something I would like to see them do here. Um, I, I feel like the developers are disconnected from the players. And, and I think the results of that are the fact that people have left the game 
in large waves um, like they've alluded to. So I really think if they want this game to last for many, many years, they need to get us involved uh, prior to these big updates to get a feel for how they believe or we believe it's going to go um, to avoid you know the pitfalls of it being one-sided right i don't think in today's world you can create anything without involving your consumers you know directly exactly and and that works towards the content because the devs have said in that round table that they are using these events and us more like a scientific experiment and we're the lab rats and with these new events, they like to introduce new mechanics and new items into the game. And if the player base is supportive of it and they enjoy it, they are going to start sprinkling that throughout the rest of the game, such as the Sun Chaser Yoon Jun engine. Uh, oh God, I hope sign you know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, well, let's talk well, about, about, about that. Let's talk about the current. Let's talk about the current content and the and the, uh, and the, and the, and the and the current events, which I'm using air quotes here, because we have those three events that was one event stacked on another event, stacked on another event, which was basically not really fleshed out and explained to us. None of us wanted these things. Even though we asked for background on these things, they didn't give it to us, and it's, it's very, very convoluted. Um, yeah, it's basically mostly because they were actually afraid. I mean, you did saw the fallback or at least the fallout after the events were released, uh, it makes sense why they didn't give us anything in advance, because it would have been just fuel put on on the fire. <laughs> so what, so do you what do you guys all think about these, uh, the latest three events? Uh, want me to start? <laughs> yeah, 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 go on. I want honest opinions on this. Now, myself, I don't have too much experience with this event. I was taking a step back from the game for the last couple weeks or so uh, due to the holidays, a lot of running around with its chicken like its head cut was cut off but I reluctantly did one thing in the event because I saw this event and nothing really stood out on the page, there was nothing I gyrated towards. Well, there's a, a, I don't know, a special taint that ties this um, to the patch notes. They have a way of telling stuff, I don't know if this is a mistranslation from Chinese, that happened before but in some way, they did the patch notes correctly, but the content was done incorrectly. This is just my opinion. The patch notes told us about amazing stuff that we could do. Scan some systems, scan some hidden stuff, get some interesting lore items, and then do some uh, weird uh, event to get like an information and knowledge about the Yang Zheng and how they depart the New Eden after the collapse of the Eve Gate. And that was that pretty much sold it for me. Uh, if you actually look at the three videos that I made with the patch notes, and then at least before the patch notes, I had some info on what are the upcoming events, and then the patch notes, and I was giggling of excitement, and then the event started, and I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> well, so, yeah, because I remember the uproar that you started, you know, because you only get eight clues and three scanners, which then burn out upon usage of those scanners. Three scanners. The, the first one was was delivered to us via the YOL event, uh, sorry, via the Fading Stars Treasure Trove event, and was a one-time scanner use. It was untradeable, and what you got is what you got. Uh, you would activate it, it would go away, and you would get, like, you'd do a mini-game that was rudimentary in terms of content. It had, like, 10 minutes max player engagement. You would get a bookmark, you would travel to said bookmark, and you would collect some of these clues. There were 24 clues in total, uh, and uh, three types, uh, three categories of clues, and each uh, category had eight clues in it, so that's 24 clues. And then you would have two more scanners uh, scattered around in the YOL login event, also started on the 16th, if I'm not mistaken, and it would provide you with well two additional bookmarks about completing a mini game, and you you would travel to said location and you would gather more clues. Now the clues that you had to gather 24, they had to be unique because you would need them in the upcoming events, logically in the Golden Age event, and you would submit these clues like form a trio, uh, one of each category, to, uh, which pertain to one specific story, and you would submit them like correctly, and you would unlock some great rewards, again mentioned in the patch notes. And the rewards were kind of 
messed up because it was some star navigation points uh, that we found out they were being used for the third event, which was the uh, Sun Chaser program. Now, the Golden Age was actually decent. It contained lore, it contained, um, I don't know, the mix and match stuff, not so much, but it gave people something like to read about, to learn more about um, Eve Echoes, at least New Eden. But it was a forced law because most of the players had no idea what exactly was contained in, in, in those stories. And they had no idea what was the background of the stories, um, which events inside New Eden, because most of the law came from EVE Online, which again, as I mentioned previously, was not transitioned and no one actually um, used the time to like tell the stories or retell the stories for new players. And we get to the Sun Chaser. Um, as I call it, casino slot machine, in which you use those points uh, to get, like, through seven stages uh, to unlock some uh, nanocores, uh, which allow you to jump like a carrier. Uh, but the weird thing is, it's all about RNG, that's why I called it a casino slot machine. Um, you got uh, 60 points in total from the, uh, from the Golden Age event, and the first stage of the Sun Chaser uses 10 points per scan and what the uh, the patch notes mentioned about a beautiful way of scanning seven hidden star systems it was uh, complete bs it was a dial with 12 dots and they would light up each time you press the scan button and you would use 10 of those points that was just the first stage but the rng was the fact that you would get one two or three dots light up on the on that dial and most of the players actually came to me and said um, we weren't even able to like get the first stage completed using our default points because they had the unlucky <laughs> luckiest moment of only unlocking one dot per scan and it's 12 dots so therefore they had to use plex and uh, the plex cost at least the the star navigation cost uh, goes up as you go through the stages so stage two will cost 20 points per scan and you also have 12 dots to unlock uh, stage 3 30 points stage 4 40 points stage 5 again 40 points i was mistaken at one point stage 5 is going to be uh, also 40 points stage 6 is going to be 50 points and stage 7 is going to be uh, 60 points so it's not going to in, into 700 plex that was complete the illiteracy on my part but it's still 600 plex in the in the, in the last stage which is in, insane uh, and you get, if you complete one such dial, you get an op box in which you can actually collect uh, a nanocore of your choosing for the first stage is a battle cruiser, the second stage is a battleship, the third stage is a faction battleship, and then it goes completely insane because even though it costs more as you progress through the stages, um, <laughs> you can you, you only get uh, a randomized nanocore in the later stages, which is completely uh, insane. And I actually went on and completed this event on the test server. It cost me around 20,000 plex to complete the entire event. Um, oh, yeah, <laughs> and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> okay, I've talked too much. <laughs> Please cut me off. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, your thoughts on the event? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, so, so of course, the plex thing is 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 horrendous but but if like the way i see it is the idea was very good you got these three these three things that you can use to go to a to a system you, you actually physically needed to move somewhere and you needed to scan it and you got uh, an item of course uh, but but the fact that you only get three so you have three things to do and then you have nothing to do and the rest is just given to us every day now like in a letter, here, here is another clue, here is another clue. Instead of giving us the stuff that makes us go and do stuff in the game. That is what I really don't understand. I mean, to make us actually play the game is something they should like uh, emphasize and making us uh, look forward to. And, and what they do is they, they make these events and, and without talking about the... <laughs> the paywalls and the plex it's like they make it just a little bit good and then they just like make it really really fast and they they, they just 
they just do something with it so it so it gets out there they don't think about it and 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 like plan it ahead so as as skillet said we need a csm with people that are in the game that are playing the game that they can talk to and say is this a good idea how should we do this uh, this event because every event has been pretty much the same except for the Halloween event the first year which was very good uh, and that might be bad because you know every event that comes after that <laughs> is is a lot worse <laughs> yeah. yeah and now the devs have said that they have plenty more events on the horizon that is coming to us however the only PvP oriented event that they do have planned is for Faction Warfare where it's going to be a three on three and you can take your own customized ship into the into Faction Warfare and use it. And I guess they're gonna try that as a mechanic to see if it, you know, if it passes. If it passes, great. If it fails, it fails. Uh, we'll have to see if it succeeds. It seems then it'll fail. be another mode. It yeah, can't fail. No, it's... Faction Warfare is one of the best things in this game that you can stream, right? Um, I don't know, it'd make a great video put out scheduled but to actually live stream faction warfare is awesome um and, and it's yeah, super there's... fun it's super fun if you haven't done it yet i would urge folks to get on comms and do it it's it's by far my favorite part of the game at this point well yeah because it's, well, yeah, it's harder like with with hunting, with hunting it's, it's hard to stream, to stream hunting because you could go, you could go a, long a long time before you actually can. yeah you don't want to have 15 minutes of of you flying around and not getting anything right like that's not great content unless you're hilarious you know <laughs> if you're if you got the charisma and the jokes then you can put pull it off but you know but the faction warfare i mean there's action constantly you're you're always doing something you're always you know battling and it's it's good i think it's a great part of this game i think the game you know faction warfare could be almost a game in and of itself it's that good i'm glad it's not but it could be. Uh, the foundation we, is great. It is. We could, it really is. We could always uh, stream playing Iveco's naked. Like, <laughs> yeah, that would work <laughs> if you're a girl. Hey, I will totally do a hot tub stream if that's what you guys are into. You know. Yeah, I'm into I, it. I wonder. I wonder if you <laughs> you make more than the donations you got for the Saint Jude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, that was good. Very nice done. Yeah. 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 Congratulations. yeah congratulations. Would you you raised? Uh, I think it was like eighteen hundred and sixty dollars. Uh, it was just over sixteen hundred dollars, yeah. 16, so 16. I think the exact number was sixteen oh nine or something like that. And so it was an awesome, awesome event. I'm thankful for all you guys that that jumped in, Skillet. Um, you know, Damon Zell, thanks for you know obviously jumping in um, for a little bit there, and it was really glad that we were able to to throw some money towards St. Jude's here towards the end of the year. Congrats, yeah, Hassel, to that one. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that was, that was great. You can, you plan on doing that as an annual event. Yeah, I think uh, I think the the blueprints there at this point. I'm uh, I'm gonna tweak a couple of things next year, I think. But overall, uh, I mean, it was it was a ton of fun to to get everybody together, and I would definitely be interested in, in doing it again next year. And most importantly, yeah. we I think we made um, you made a, a, a bunch of kids happy for Christmas, right? That's the most important thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm I'm just glad that we were able to support such a great uh, great cause. Blue, Blue yeah, Nina, what do you guys think on the current uh, events going on in the game and the content? Uh, I personally didn't participate in them too much, and I, because, as you said, there's not too much of a draw. I do think they were a bit overcomplicated. Um, I think sometimes complication can be great uh, to keep people interested, but when you're... I think it was just too complicated. Like I, I, I didn't know where to even start. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Nina, Nina? Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> like, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, that laugh says it already. No, but it's like I read the patch notes. They bring out all of this like really cool sounding stuff that actually makes you fly out into space and do things like hunting down hidden systems and scanning for planets and stars and getting rewards and stuff. The biggest feedback I have been trying to give to the devs for over a year has been we need more content that gets us out of the station. Because, like, the Neon Rain event, you just sat in the station, brought plex boxes, and hope you got lucky. 
no one wants to do that. It's just like, log in, give us money, that's your content. That's just not good. And so then they reveal all of these things, and then we load into patch day, and it's just like, oh god, my PMs are going to be flooded. Because <laughs> the amount of people expecting to actually fly out and do stuff, and then we just get one scanner on day one. And I was even in the CC channel, like, you know, just wait until the main event comes out, it'll be better. Like, please. By, by the way, you lost a bet. <laughs> we did have three scanners. <laughs> yep, you're right. I did. Uh, speaking yeah. of station stuff, um, sorry to interrupt for just one minute. There is content that can be done in station, and it has been done in Evil Line. It's the uh, Discovery project. And at one point, I think some uh, some of the devs hinted that they might be introduced that. Nina, do you have any info on that? It, it, it is coming the anniversary, this year. In the anniversary event, they revealed it would be coming soon, TM, to Echoes. Yeah, what do you guys think about like the direction of the game? Because they just released that the dev roundtable. Uh, I thought there was a lot of interesting stuff discussed in there. There was. There... Yeah, you're right. They're right. There was a, a lot of great stuff in that. And in fact, I remember the devs going around discussing in that roundtable what their favorite content uh, was over the last year. And I don't remember which dev said it, but he said his favorite was the introduction of capital ships carriers and dreads uh because it's giving them a lot of time to prepare other modes and give them time to work on other things because it takes so long to get to that point of doing that and plus we have a lot of uh industrial stuff coming down the pipe as well with the re release of the orca the Rourke wolf and um the yeah that was uh, yeah. Exile, the senior producer it, it sounds like that stuff is probably coming towards the uh ending half of next year though because they mentioned at some point that the first six months are pretty much going to be uh, like uh, making everyone happy in terms of like the slow little things, and then like the the last six months is going to be like new content. They mentioned that the Orco Walk Rule and the Mining Command ships will be released around April, which gives me the impression that they're going to do the big balance patch and release those ships at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, they said that the balance patch is definitely coming in April. And it's not just ships that's going to be balancing. They're going to take a look at everything, including modules. Modules that are overperforming, they're going to release modules to counteract that. And modules that are underperforming, they're going to release modules to give it uh, a bit more power to sustain with other things. Yeah, but uh, you know what I like most about the uh, that video that they released with the Dev Roundtable is in inside that video they actually acknowledged their mistake with the balance patch at least the one they did in April, and they came up with uh, an action item for what to do next. And even though they postponed or at least cancelled the the balance patch that should have came around, like we already passed that, uh, they did mention that they would. Uh, take time into deploying the balance patch and making sure that the issues that keep uh, surfacing uh, will be addressed and if that's not correct they will continue to address or at least keep one month of buffer to continually address until the balance patch is correctly implemented and and everyone is happy that's yeah. something that's what thumbs up for me i mean here's the thing though it, it is great that they acknowledge that and, and they're 100% accurate, but I hate to give credit for for things you should already be doing, right? Like to me, that's a given. You, If you're planning a major uh, update like that or a balance patch, you should be on standby for a month or so to, to, to fix the bugs and work out any kinks. Like to me, that's just part of deployment, right? Development and deploy. You, you don't just deploy and, and then forget about it and go on to the next thing and hope you did it right like i mean that's yeah, what you, should have been doing from day one you need to understand something uh a game of such magnitude as eve has never been implemented by netties before they oh, look at the the entire portfolio of games they didn't even even scratch the surface with a game of such magnitude so they're actually learning to to to, uh, to use the bicycle <laughs> <laughs> this is why they mentioned that it's it's an experiment for them because they had no idea on how to deal with stuff 
uh, with the community, with the requests, with the suggestions. They had some roadmaps planned, I'll give them that, and it all blew up in their faces once uh, the game started rolling out and the players started complaining and players started doing that and exploits being found. If you remember the exploit with the uh, being cloaked inside uh, inside anomalies or inside belts and preventing other alliances from forming or doing anything yeah. in, in said systems. Um, so I, I don't think they actually have any clue on how, at least they didn't have any clue on how to run this uh, when the game went live. Because yeah, the beta at, did not the actually prepare time, them at all. <laughs> well, and, and that's fair, that's fair. But at the same time, it feels like they're trying to build a bicycle or ride a bicycle, you know, from scratch. And the the truth is that there is a lot of other game, or there are a lot of other games and there are blueprints for how to, to do things like balance, right? And so I agree that I'm I'm very excited to hear them say, we know that it's coming, we know this, that, and the other. But I mean, I think about every other game that I've ever played and there are minor balance tweaks and Deddy's even does, did it with carriers, right? I mean, there are minor balance tweaks that go on on almost every patch. And so I think for me, the thing that's been the most frustrating is since April, we really haven't had anything tweaked, right? And I think that there's been a lot of frustration, especially from players who are tired of interceptors being the only thing that they ever fly, right? I mean, that's just kind of the, the most obvious one, but it feels like even if they made very small targeted changes every month, that would that would address a lot of the criticism. And, you know, to be frank, it's just, a lot of it's, hey, we're going to take the, the interceptor bonus from 7% to 6% and see how that does in the next month. And then we might bump it back up or we might, you know, continue to de-escalate it or whatever it is. I, I think to me, that would be the better action item than we're still just going to have one patch. But don't worry, guys, we're going to be ready for it when it comes. Yeah, I, I don't know. they mentioned that they're spending all this time collecting data and that's why they haven't done another patch yet and all that because they need, they need more information. But it, you can't do that with balancing in a game of this scale, in my opinion. You need to, uh, I mean, I do think it's good that they're being cautious. You need to be cautious in balancing, obviously. But there's mm -hmm. some things that you kind of have to work about on, on your feet and you have to see how it does. I mean, if you're waiting for a year between every single balance patch to collect info and try to make it perfect, it, you're not going to make it perfect. It's just as simple as yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. And I think that the there's actually another YouTuber that I watch a good bit and that, um, you know, Peter McKinnon, I'm sure you guys have, if you've looked up any kind of photography or how to do video or whatever, right, you've, you've probably seen some of his stuff. But he has a saying of done is better than perfect, right? And I think that's kind of what I wish that NetEase would take a little bit of here. I'm not saying that they push stuff out haphazardly because I know that they would never ever do that, you know. Oh, but oh no, no. <laughs> but they, you they, know, they just, release something that's broken or does I, I know, right? So I, I mean, you know, I, I recognize Stay that this is know. a big that this is a big effort, but it, it just again, like, I, I just wish that we could make some small incremental progress, and you know, for them to even just say, over the next three months, we are going to fine tune interceptors, and if we see that interceptors are suddenly you know so useless that the only thing that they're used for is hauling then okay let's let's bump it back up you know and, and we kind of have this iterative approach um because you're you're right i mean it's it's a huge effort it's a huge game and for them to try to take this you know one shot approach um every six months just it, it just feels like they're setting themselves up for failure in my mind but you know what, right. what all these issues stem from? I mean, it's, it's something that me and uh, Solven and Nina, uh, we actually criticized it even from uh, when the beta, when we saw all the ship arrangements and, uh, and the ship progression tree. Uh, they had a model and to uh, complete what, um, what uh, Scipio said, they had the model. The model was EVE Online. They yeah, could have yeah. copied that and they didn't use it to try to reinvent the wheel. And the fact that our ship progression is vertical as compared to the EVE Online, which is um, 
uh, based on uh, specialized content and you specializing in skill and having skill requirements and not unlocking you reach tech level seven you have every ship of tech level seven unlocked and you don't need any of the skills to fly them you can just hop onto a dictor or whatever and you can just go there and lay bubbles you don't actually need skills to do that that's that's mind-blowing that's not okay and this is where all the balance stuff and and issues uh, stem from because they cannot use the eve online model for balancing now because they've diverted so far of course with how they right. uh, arranged all the ship progression and stuff that it's kind of difficult because now they have to come up with their own solutions and that's hard to do on on, on a game of of such scale and magnitude as, as eve yes well, and it's, it's, uh, it's kind of it's, scary you know probably. they they have okay. this issue yeah, i'm sorry they have this issue and <laughs> You know, we should we should actually raise our hands. But all right, um, they have this issue with this game, and they have all these changes they need to do, and they have all this stuff that they have planned for for uh, like like what they talked about on the roundtable, which is a huge discussion. Like it's it's so many parts that we could talk about. But when they say, yeah, we will do a lot of tweaking and changing this. Uh, uh, these items here, we will buff them and we will make them worse or whatever. We will even add items or ships to, to fill some roles that are missing in the game. I get scared because they don't know what we need. They, they obviously don't know what we need and they don't take our help. And they will do some major changes in the future. And we have no idea what that is except what we can hear, like what, what they talked about, which is also a bit scary. But why not why not start talking to guys like us uh so they know what to do i mean we could actually probably give them like a spreadsheet change this and it would actually work better than than what it does today that was all no i i agree i mean even with our upgraded access to the devs and I'm, I'm using air quotes here because we don't really have access to the devs any more than anyone else does <clears throat> we don't get any previews of anything like events coming up i mean obviously we get some notifications of things like the q a before it's released but nothing monumental but for events coming up it'd be great if they turned around and said hey this is what we have planned what do you guys think you know just kind of like a use us to brainstorm and to get kind of a feeling for what the community wants and to go a step further there's the test server which is just a mirror of the live server why couldn't that have like the next build with these events and then they say hey go ahead and uh go on the the test server play test these events make some hype make some videos you know sign an nda we'll let you know when to release these videos and then we could use that to hype up the community uh, on future events like hey this is everything you need to know about this event yes very important well and that's what other games do you know a lot of other big development companies teams supercell is a great example that's exactly what they do and with their content creators um and it works well you see it, it's well received by the community it does get the hype and and the game's rewarded for it you know just j just simple questions okay this is an event would this work is this fun and where can we extract money you know just that simple questions and we, we can say yeah this works or do more of this and well money well yeah sure uh make something over here that people can put money to that that's gonna work you know uh that's a lot better than having something that everyone on ebecos has to actually buy plex and not put on your on your game time and you you actually have to put that plex to be available to claim something from an event seriously Right, pay for events, pay for your ship when it explodes up using the uh, the insurance system, <clears throat> multiple uses for, for Plex. And I am happy to see that uh, there hasn't been an event in a while that uses the AUR 
to unlock certain features. I mean, obviously we get the Concord Pass and to unlock the second tier you would have to use the AUR, but that's just like any other mobile game that's out there right now that uses one of these 30-day calendars or, or 60-day calendars uh, to use AUR. But what are your guys' thoughts on this? Yeah, I got a thought yeah. right off the bat. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go about, ahead. About the AUR. Now, now they use it in EVE Online. Uh, yeah, EVE Online uh, for, for clothing and stuff like that. Uh, but like in this game, they could have it. Uh, for example, if you want to have another portrait on your character, you can just like release new portraits like every month or in on every event like here's five new portraits this is like a snake and this is like a character and this is a new Kaldari character buy that for AUR you know that would be perfect people would buy that it's it's weird that they have the payment for the actual game no I, I don't get it most games don't do that today well I think the challenge that Echoes has and probably email Online as well is I don't know about you guys but when I play the game I'm zoomed out the only time I see the skin on my ship is when I'm in station. Um, Pixels. <laughs> right. I mean, you're so zoomed out. I mean, my, my my skin could be a donkey and it wouldn't matter to me because I can't see it anyway. And I think that's the challenge they have with skins is yes, they put out some, they've actually had some really, really good skins. Um, but all in all, I don't think because of the fact that most people I know play zoomed out. You're not going to see the skin, so who's going to buy it? Not many, you know. So they do need to find another way to to monetize. Well, they, might, they might they might actually have that now if with if they're going to do that whole hide the UI, UI thing, which is going to open up a whole new branch of video making, video making and, and content, content creation. creation. Skins, skins could that hand, 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 that work hand in hand right there. Take yeah, for example, would... ride games. Yeah, that's a good example. Sorry, Chief, go ahead. No, 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 I was just going to say, we're so different, you and I, Big Skillers. I I recently just sat and looked at my ship. <laughs> and I do it every day, like every <laughs> ship. I'm, I'm a sucker for skins. But yeah, that's just me. The, the best example for this kind of, uh, of monthly progression chart, you get in, um, like, I don't know, some unlockables, and you can actually buy a pass and get some more unlockables. Uh, take Riot Games, for example. Yeah? League of Legends, uh, League of Legends of Wild Rift, which is uh, the version for mobile. Uh, that game is completely free to play. I mean, you actually don't have to invest a penny in it to enjoy the full features of the game. You can play any uh, character, any, any hero you want, um, and you can actually take that hero and play with your friends or on online on ranked battles. And um, there's also like 10 or 15, no, I think 10 heroes that are uh, unlocked every week, like by rotation. So you can exper experience and experiment each one of those heroes. And what do you find in the store? Well, uh, emotes, um, um, skins, and all a bunch of stuff that are actually irrelevant for the gameplay. But it does feel good that you have a specific skin for, I don't know, uh, Jinx, uh, and she dresses up as some weirdo, and she starts shooting, um, I don't know, uh, cupcakes instead of uh, rockets. It's that is the fun of it. That's it. That's how you monetize a game, probably. They've been running that um, since long time, and I think maybe they the Nethys should actually um, ask right. for some hints on how to do it. And it, it, doesn't it doesn't give any kind of like competitive. It doesn't give any kind of competitive edge. Whereas, whereas now, where you these, these nano cores and these, these events, events some, some do, do give a large competitive event where you, where you feel the pressure well now i have to spend to buy this to keep my status or be the best at, in the ship that i could possibly be yeah but it's that sort of irrelevant in 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 new eden or at least the even universe because um it's asymmetrical combat it's not like in in uh, legal legends where it's five versus five it's asymmetrical combat you buy the best nanocores the best items the best whatever you want to fly and you land on the gate and it's a uh, gate camp with bubbles and five friends with some dictators and they mess you up in the most horrible manner possible <laughs> and you've lost everything so yeah but it's, i it's mean it's fake <laughs> it, it is but at the same time like I think there's two two big problems that Echoes has, right? Because 
or with skin specifically. And the first is that they did give us nano cores where you can customize everything. So why would I then go and buy a separate skin, right? Like mm -hmm. if I can go and make my own skin basically, like what's the what's the point in buying one? Um the other is I, I don't know that I completely agree with the the comment about the nano cores don't matter because while that is true, if you get into a bubble camp, there's only so much you can do. Like, I also know if you look at things like the um, uh, the Serpentis nanocores, right? Which extend the web range or extend the, uh, the strength of the webs and stuff like that. Like, that is a huge advantage. And being able to, you know, get some of those types of bonuses or get the disruptor range bonus or stuff like that, because now suddenly I can fight a very different type of battle that you have no counter for yeah. right because th there's if, if you're in a, a material or something like that right like let's say that i'm in an interceptor and i try to come point you um you know or a, a rattlesnake or whatever you know i'm in a faction battleship you're in an interceptor and you get in close if you have a scram that is 30 kilometers suddenly i'm using obviously a little bit of made up numbers here but if you have a nano core that gives you a scram of 30 kilometers i can't slingshot you because i'm never going to get my micro warp drive on right i, yeah, I can't do PvP, a lot of this other stuff yeah in solo pvp is definitely going to give you an edge you're right on that and yeah it makes sense yeah nina, nina, i agree your, your i mean thoughts? I think... nina what's your thoughts on this uh I understand we, we've all been talking and jumping in and uh, it's hard for you to get a word in uh, edgewise, but what are your thoughts uh, on this itself? I'm sorry we're drowning you out. Yeah, my uh, quiet British voice is being drowned out here. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, give me your, give me your thoughts on, on what we were just talking about. I'm sorry. Uh, to go back a little bit with the idea yeah. of the CSM, it's, it has been talked about a lot and a lot of people do want it and at the very start of the game you know in alpha beta and the first few months the mods were kind of like that csm bridge so we would be collecting player comments suggestions feedback etc etc giving it to the devs they'll look at it and then say like okay yeah fair enough and then hopefully start playing things around that so we did have that bridge to start with in an unofficial sense with the moderation team but then as the game progressed and dev time got more uh, valuable developing stuff more complex content comes out and stuff we sort of lost that link that we have that we had sorry so are you so saying, are you saying that the that the you mods also have, have less uh dev time, dev time than what you originally, initially had originally, originally. yes but i put Partly I put that down to them, you know, they're very busy people. I don't want to keep bugging them and stuff, so. <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah, but I, um, I, I know you, you also talked to, talk to a lot of the devs one-on-one -on -one too, though. I remember on certain, on certain aspects, aspects throughout the last year. If I have to, I poke them directly. Again, I don't really like doing it, but if it's something that's uh, really important, then I do speak to them. And most of the time they do reply, sometimes they don't. But then I feel like they've got so many PMs anyway, it might just be missed, you know. And on the, and on the whole nanocore, nano I don't want to say skin versus skin thing, but the nano, whole nanocore about feeling, feeling pressured to buy or, or get a certain nanocore. Do, nano do you find that as well? Yes, and I really dislike that. Because, like, as mentioned, in a game like League, you get skins and stuff, and you look pretty or run around in a dress where you have a tracksuit on or something. You know, it's just fun cosmetic things, but then it can't be com uh, competitively changing because in League, it's just a straight-up stat check most of the time. You know, two ADCs run up to each other, you right-click each other, whoever has the most stats wins. If you suddenly give the one with lower stats 18% more damage, then you lose because of something you can't really control, and then you'd have to buy that. In EVE Echoes, due to its very nature, while nanocores give you a benefit, it's much more about player skill or choosing your engagements, because you could have everything in the world, you could buy 10,000 plex, buy the best modules ship, and then you can run it into someone that's just more skilled and more experienced and still die. Yeah, yeah, so I'm running into the same problem, and I'm probably going to get yelled at for this, um, but I, I fly with Genesis, 
and there is their doctrine chips. And I'm not going to go into doctrines, even though a lot of people know what the doctrines are, but the current battleship that I fly in this doctrine is the Armageddon, and it's, everyone knows, it's slow as hell. <clears throat> now, the new meta is basically the speed meta. Now, for me to bring this ship to that CTA, I now have to get the Concord Nano core, whichever version it is, but that 41,000 battle, you know, uh, battleship nano core for the speed boost, just so I can stay, you know, up to speed with everyone because there's a minimum of speed. And if I don't hit that speed, I'm, I can't bring the ship because I won't survive. Um, so I, I definitely feel the pressure of having to, you know, spend, uh, whatever I, I need, whether it be rigs or, or, or the nano core just to stay competitive and with him yeah that's uh when it starts getting that extreme it's really uh can leave a very sour taste because you're like you sit there in your ship you got it ready for the cta you got the fit and stuff maybe buying the entire thing brand new and then your corpse like oh yeah you don't have this now of course they can't join us and then you need to arbitrarily wait like three to six weeks to get the concord points from the pass to then just be able to fly and then in true E fashion, six weeks later, the meta's changed and you're in different ships, so the points are useless. Yep, and, yep, and now you just spend 40,000 uh, skill points on something you're not even going to fly anymore. You know, Dame Zell, I, I know of an alliance that would be happy to take you and doesn't require nano cores. Just, just saying. Uh. <laughs> this is a funny thing about being me, though, and I, and I don't mean it's like it is, but I can I can I can quit whichever alliance I'm with, and I'm pretty sure even if I was fighting against whoever, I'm welcome basically anywhere I go. Uh, That's good. Well, we would we would love to have you, so uh, I'll just throw the shameless plug out there. But that that's something that you guys just crossed over a a, a big issue, like. To me, the meta has been so broken towards drones for so long. Like, if that's the only way to fight large fleet engagements for the most part, that that's indicative of a problem. That in itself tells you the game's not balanced. Yeah, and the drones don't even have the, the best damage in the game. <laughs> No, something is definitely that. broken here. Uh, <laughs> they still also, they, they they still also have the bug as well, as well um, um, where if you, and this, bug's and this bug's been around for a year, if you send, if you send five drones out, out and you go out of range, only one, only of, your one of your drones, drones is going to come back and the other three are going to still be on your target. Correct. Yeah, so I've done a couple and, of videos on that. Drop and leave. Yeah, the drop and go. I think that the drone issue is kind of indicative of shields and shield bubbles and their overuse because I mean, that's that's pretty much the only reason they're used to get around those bubbles. Yeah, there's alliances and coalitions out there. I'm not going to name names <laughs> who who are developing a first strike uh, type scenario with like Tempest and just uh, a way to break away from that drone meta. And they're they're testing these first strike uh, capabilities, and it's just going to be so much damage, you know, onto one ship uh, that the YG won't be able to. Uh, keep up with the incoming damage and there are also those yeah. alliances that prefer uh brawling and uh, actually scanning but it's difficult to scan in a 400 player system with the current scanning mechanics that we have uh to scan the individual and just create a warp in inside the bubble and just decimate the entire fleet with brawling battleships that's amazing I i've noticed a couple of small alliances that have done this in, in the previous months that's a, that's a great point. Nina, you, Nina were you were saying? I was going to say, it's just because of the wild imbalance between the shield fields as mentioned and the armor links. You put up a bubble and it covers everyone in your fleet, like all 50 people, if not more, I believe. And then that's it. But with armor links, they just do like 10 people and not even that great defensively because then your lodge needs to heal everyone all the time and... Right, so right. It's, it's not just one person damage taking damage. It's it's uh, it's, if I remember correctly, armor links spread, spread damage across. across. Armor links uh, spread damage from the target to the guardian itself. So there's always going to be two people taking damage now because they're ten people in a squad and the armor link is squad only. I believe still. Then that means you can have ten people taking damage in one fleet, and then you got ten lodgy reps. And because 
armor logi grabs are complete trash. Another issue. It's just not feasible. There would be a pretty easy way to rework it so that drones aren't the uh, primary damage dealer in these fleets, though. Well, they talked about reworking uh, remote armor wrapping too, so. And, and they're talking about doing, still trying to work on the disparity uh, between shield and armor. And Nina, I, I know you were heavily in that uh, before the first balance came out of the whole campaign of making, you know, the rebalancing of armor itself. Yeah, they seem to listen and then ignore me when it came to large reps. Well, welcome to the club. <laughs> You know, I, I think we had a good year uh, in in relevance to things that came in the game. I mean, we had a lot of good content, a lot of eh, not so good content, uh, a lot of bugs, bugs that have been in the game since the beginning of the game that actually just finally get fixed, such as the local chat bug. But um, I am hopeful. I am hopeful uh, for what's on the horizon, what's on the cusp, and what's coming down the pipe. Um, so I, I am looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, hopefully this next year will bring us some, some really good things. Uh, what do you guys feel? Are you guys feel the same way? Are you more of a cup half full? Uh, I, my main goal has always been an API. I, uh, I am hoping for that, you know, sometime in 2023. But uh, on everything else, uh, I'm pretty hopeful. Yeah, I think I've got a drinking game from when uh, every time you ask for an API in the uh, content creator group at this point. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting in the next uh, in the same bucket as Chief. I'm, um, I'm, I want to see what they come up with next and if they listen it, if they learned anything from this past year. Uh, but I'm also afraid because I have no idea what thing might go inside their minds it's not actually their minds because we know and i've mentioned this in, in a couple of videos it's not their design it's the, the design team and the developers are just execution phase like the orders come from way up top and we have no idea what those people are thinking well, here's the any changes change that they make doesn't also have to be run by CCP since it is initially their game that this uh, is basically, I would say, yep. an homage to. Yeah, uh, for some reason, on several aspects of the game, they do require CCP approval, which is nice, um, but we don't know exactly which, uh, which parts are those. But one, one of the parts is definitely the law because when I tried to push the um, one of my stories, uh, they actually mentioned that they need to get in touch with CCP and they get to need, uh, need to get approval. And then I have to uh, see, cease my rights to CCP for the story to be canon and so on. So, yeah. I am uh, cautiously optimistic, although I kind of have to be after so long here. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I see the game that they've produced from scratch, been through, through all the changes, through the terrible alpha balance, right up until today, and I know that they can do it, but there's just something inside of me that says that something else is blocking them from actually achieving their vision. Whether that just be the up aboves, as uh, mentioned before, or... Uh, just lack of actual physical dev coding power to get everything out the way that they want it. But as ever, I'll always be optimistic. I think that's a great place to cut it off and, and stop this episode with us discussing our hopes and dreams and what's to come on the on the horizon. Uh, it looks like this next year is going to be shaping up to be something good, and uh, I, I have high hopes for it. Now, I do want to thank all of my guests for coming and being a part of this this summit and these uh, these episodes, these talks. Now, if there's something that you want to hear us discuss, either put it down in the comments below or get in contact with your favorite content creator and let them know what you want us uh, to, to talk about, what you want us to discuss. Now, we're going to go around and uh, we're just going to sign off. And uh, from me, Damon Zell, and Echoes from the Front, I... 
Hope everyone has a great week, a great weekend. Fly safe. Remember, we're always one vision, one purpose, one front. Yeah, and this is achieved. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to to uh, say that as long as we have the community, this game can go very, very far. And that is also <laughs> unless they actually just ruin the game, which I don't think I got. I hope they, they don't ruin it too much. I got faith in them. But the community makes the whole game. So uh, thank you so much for having me here. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thanks, Damon Zell. I really appreciate you you getting us together to have these conversations because I think they're important, right? Not only I think it's going to be a good listen for your, you know, for the viewers, but I think it's important um, for us to get together and talk about these things and get it out there. And you know, I just you know, I'm glad I'm, I can be a part of it, and you know, I'm looking forward to what's you know what's to come in the next several months. You know, I am cautiously optimistic as as well, um, and. Just, you know, wait to see how things pan out, you know. Um, I, I wish everybody to have a, a safe new year. And that's it for me. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Demon Cell for having me. And I really enjoyed uh, getting us all together here. It's, it's something amazing. And, well, I guess that's it for today. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the uh, rest to go, I guess. <laughs> anyway, um, again, I'd like to extend my thanks to uh, Demon for inviting me. Although I kind of pushed my way into it, I guess. But Because <laughs> <laughs> technically I'm not a content creator like the other fine people here. I'm just a mod that does stuff. But I f felt like I had some insights hopefully. Uh, thank you all for listening, and I hope you had a good holidays. Uh, as developer of thank you uh, for inviting me, Damon Zell, and I hope everyone has happy holidays, and I'm going to request an API one more time. Yeah, Apex House developers are listening, for some reason. Uh, on behalf of Spook Hall. Uh, they're they're going to get Cynthia drunk. Trust me, I, trust me, I, 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 don't, don't, think, I don't, don't think, don't think, watch they, watch think they watch my channel, channel. otherwise I, I don't think I'd still be an official content creator. I can try. I can try. I can hope. Uh, well, this has been a blast, Danzel. Thanks so much for having me. Um, to everybody else, this has been a great discussion. I'm really looking forward to more of this. Uh, to everybody listening or, or watching, uh, thanks for sticking with us this long. I hope that you enjoyed our, our ramblings. But um, we're just excited for the future of the game. I, I think it's it's been a lot of fun this past year, year and a half, however long we've been playing at this point. And uh, just really, really excited to, to continue watching this thing build and hopefully just getting to, to have a lot more great memories and uh, being able to, to push through some of these uh, challenges that we're seeing right now so that we can all be having a good time for years to come, just like people did with EVE Online. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And, and a future talk, which I'm thinking about, you guys, you guys let me know down in the comments if you want to see this, where we do uh, uh, content careers. Uh, serious serious discussion, discussion on insurance, insurance but, without but with alcohol. <laughs> I, I'm already prepared for that. I, I'm going to need a lot of that. So, um, yeah, just give me a heads up so I can go clear out Costco. Yeah. Yeah. Am I invited? <laughs> Everyone's, invited. Everyone's invited. Everyone's invited. <laughs>